So 2013, I, that was kind of, that was the first year I ever went to regionals and I was on a team. I was on a team with me and my two sisters and then um, the guys. And it was an okay experience. <laughs> um, I kind of decided that year that I wanted to go individual. I knew I could do really well going individual. So I started taking that really seriously um, going into 2014. My whole life, I, I quit my job um, and that became my entire focus. And the Open rolled around, I did really well in the Open. Like I really had no idea what to expect because it was my first year as individual. I mean, I knew, I knew I had the capability to do well, but I just, I wasn't sure. So the Open rolled around, I did really well. I forget if I got second or third, I forget that year. I think second, going into regionals. Um, went to regionals and that was a battle. Good battle for second place between Michelle Latondra and Christine and Dolly. Michelle Latondra used to battling with Camila blanc Bazinet for that top spot. Now she's in a fight just to get to the game. We kept going back and forth between second and third place. Um, and so it was a fight to the end. At the last, the last workout, I was in second. Whoever wins between these two is going to Carson. The tension is high. It is do or die. I have no words. The tension in the arena, like you mentioned, it, it's just everybody's on pins and needles right here. And she edged me out on that workout, which put her into second place and bumped me down to third. And that's the year they only took uh, two to the games. So I was third, wasn't making the games. And after all the regionals were all said and done, there was like a worldwide leaderboard. And I was like ninth on that, on that board, um, that leaderboard. And it was just like, whoa. Like I'm ninth on this leaderboard and not going to the games. But it is what it is. And then, so, you know, that was, that was hard for me. I took that pretty hard. I remember actually saying at the end of 2014, being like, I don't think I can do this. Like, it's so stressful. Last week or so, it's been three sessions a day, just short sessions, about an hour a piece in prep for this competition. Um, before this, it was two sessions a day, one morning, one afternoon, one, usually the afternoon was more emphasized on lifting, and then this morning cardio base Metcon style stuff. That was rough. How long did I take you? 9.59. Start off just a touch slower. I did 145 for the first thousand and then dropped like a 147. So, but I probably could have held a little bit quicker. Just wanted to rest going into the clean and jerks. Uh, yeah, I feel like it went good though, overall. Went to the CrossFit Games in 2017 with the Wasatch Brutes, won the CrossFit Games in 2018, that season. Led into regionals, took seventh at regionals. It was a roller coaster of emotions. Going from the team um, 
I, I put a lot of mental pressure on myself and stress to where I was more afraid of failing than I was going into it to achieve and to qualify through the CrossFit Games. So it led me into having more of a mental breakdown in the regionals than a physical breakdown. Not knowing how to handle that pressure, certain situations, it just led into more of a mental breakdown in that final workout, not being able to do what I needed to do to qualify. Yeah, so I I don't do a lot of dairy. Um, this and cream in my coffee in the morning is pretty much the only dairy I do. And it's heavy ass cream. <laughs> it's like so thick. Um, yeah, so ghee butter. Then I'm gonna do a cup of egg whites. I literally eat the same thing every morning usually. Mostly every morning. Sometimes I'll add a different berry or like, but pretty much it's the same every morning. I don't do meal prepping a lot. I just kind of like, I don't do like meals. I won't be like chicken, veggie, rice with a bunch of like Tupperware in here. I'll just do like a couple meats and like veggies. Sometimes I don't even do that. If I'm feeling like ambitious, I will. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna put an egg in this. Liven it up a little bit. <laughs> I had, I had two surgeries, um, we don't really know what happened, but like they missed shit in my shoulders, like they missed my, I had labrums done, and they missed my rotator cuffs. So I wasn't, I wasn't recovering from the first ones as I should have been, and so I went back to get <clears throat> more imaging done, and I had huge rotator cuff tears still that they didn't fix. So, um, the surgeon I was dealing with then was like, if you want function in your shoulders, like when you're 50, like you literally just have to do this. It, it, it's not even to get you back into the sport. Like, yes, it's going to, but it's literally just to make you, enable you to have um, function when you're older. So I had to go back in for another set and get my rotator cuffs both done on, <clears throat> on both sides. The surgeon, that fixed my shoulders for the second time was like, like those those rotator cuff tears were so big it had to have been done by something traumatic. Where, which my shoulder when I snatched I went right, mm. and it, so he's like it would have had to happen there. So the surgeon probably didn't miss it or not fix it. Like I don't know. This is Klaus. Um, he's a German Shepherd. He's like, I think he's 10 months old, around there. Super rambunctious. He eats raw. This is one of his meals. Ooh. And organic too, of course. <laughs> okay, how's your laundry? Mitch, are you weighing your food or do you just no. kind of eat? Christine does it all. So how Matt Fraser has Sammy, I have Christine. It was going into, I would say, regionals in 2018, uh, probably a few months before that, where she really started taking over and helping me a ton and making sure I was eating right, making sure I was getting enough food because I had a big issue where I wasn't eating enough food. Um, so she really took over the whole nutrition side of it. You eating anything else or just the smoothie for now? Just this for now. I had a Cliff Bar in an apple this morning and then I'll eat something later. Usually like a bagel sandwich or two bagel sandwiches. She's there every day with me at the gym. She's not working out with me per se. She does her own thing. But she's the one who sees when I'm struggling, when things are going good. She's the one to point out when I think I do well and she sees things that can be improved on. Um, she also talks with Adrian about certain things that she sees that I need to improve on that I'm not willing to tell Adrian, but she's she just wants the best and so she's able to do all of that and help me. She's gonna do the Italian, like the first day of the Italian thing today, but I think I'm gonna jump in and do the snatch ladder with them. So yeah, a little change up. 
I've been feeling like I need to spend less time in the gym lately. So, yeah, that's just something I'm going through right now. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm gonna do two sessions today or just one, but we're gonna start out with something fun and do a snatch ladder. <laughs> I have not done a snatch ladder. Whew. I haven't done a snatch ladder since I hurt my shoulders, actually. So this is gonna be good. This is gonna be fun. So, snatch, barbell, sprint ladder. And really, it's, uh, it can be full, power, whatever you want, and it's for time. And so you can see the weights. We're gonna warm up pretty light, and then we're, we're gonna get heavy. Aggressive, see who, who, can, who can throw the big weights around. That was 155. So, one more round to go. What? One more round. Yeah, uh, see if I can PR in this one. Woo. I'm shooting high. <laughs> so I was on the competition floor at regionals and I was on the in the snatch ladder 2016 and making my way through it and on the last snatch my shoulder, I dropped the bar behind me and my shoulders just literally ripped. Uh, but I had so much adrenaline that I was like, whatever, you know, like I'm out here, let's, let's fucking go. Um, went again and the same thing happened. And honestly, I didn't think I was gonna be out until I went into the back and could not, like, I just didn't have any function really. So I had to pull out, um, and that's where my like two-year recovery road began. Getting to the games, placing games, doing really well at the games is something I want to do, something that's what I'm working towards. Um, but the process to get there and my mental mindset towards that process has shifted. Instead of going in and training thinking I need to, you know, work out and this workout has to be better than these top competitors that I see or whatever it may be, it's shifted into, okay, how can I give my best in this workout and just trusting that that performance is good enough to get me ultimately to where I want to go. So we've got the Mid-Atlantic qualifier that goes 27, 21, 15, 9. Uh, dumbbell squat cleans, toes to bar, and 100 double unders in between each set. Where are we at? The what? Where are we? We're at FNX. 
for the Live in Victory CrossFit gym with all the volleyball players going on, so it's super loud. It went good. It was a rough one though. But overall, went according to game plan, didn't blow up anywhere, so that's always good. <sighs> now, I'm doing like movement prep for right here. Um, All the things. When I came out here, things were still um, a little rocky here and there. I was still dealing with some issues, um, but I started to get back into the flow of like training twice a day, um, intensity ramping up big time, you know, started lifting heavy again. And a few months into living here, I truly felt back to like myself as far as an athlete honestly the what the 175 coming off the floor it just felt like heavy yeah but did you see the one where i dropped like i didn't even go for it yeah like i got super in my head yeah and then you said that after you're like you're like i'm in my head i'm in my head and i was like oh no and i was like like what the fuck are you doing yeah. Um, and I was just like, fucking commit to it, and I didn't got it. Yeah. I was so fucking nervous. Like, <laughs> so this for you. Like, I, like, <laughs> I had the biggest butterflies in my stomach. Yeah. I did take like massive deep breaths. I was like, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> when I looked over at you before you started, your hand was on the wall. You were just so serious. I was like, oh no, oh no. You're like this. It's <laughs> like, oh shit, she's gonna go for it. Here she goes, all or nothing. Oof, I'm like, the feeling of that floor, it just like, I can't even explain it. So that's what I'm excited about. Like, I get so nervous, you, I can't even tell you. Like, so nervous, I feel like I'm gonna like puke. I can't talk to people. But I'm, it's like an excited nervous, like, and I have that, but I do have the fear of something happening because it did happen to me um, as far as an injury, but I don't focus on that, you know, like I'll think about it sometimes, but it's not, it's not in the forefront of my, my brain. I'm thinking like, I haven't done this for three years and I am so excited to get back out there. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. So, I have therapy. Um, I try to come in at least once to two times a week.
So uh, the benefits are cryotherapy or uh, reducing inflammation and in athletic recovery. So it was invented by a Japanese doctor trying to find a cure for arthritis, but uh, throughout time, athletes have discovered how beneficial it is for their own personal recovery, for their joints, their ligaments, their cognitive function, and their muscles as well. So because inflammation affects everything. So as far as frequency, if people are training intensely, like especially for an event, I recommend they come in daily. Uh, like Mitch trains all the time. Obviously he lives far away, so he comes down as often as he can. Uh, but if people are train, training like for a CrossFit event or a triathlon or if we get a lot of UFC fighters that come in. When they're in camp, they come in every single day. Uh, other than that, people come in one to three days a week as a general rule for like just general health and wellness. For me, it's still a battle of not putting the pressure on myself and still being able to focus and giving my best. So that's definitely still um, something that I get nervous about because I know I can perform and I can compete at a high level. Uh, but for me, it's myself limiting myself versus any workout or any physical thing that limits myself. So that's the only thing that makes me a little nervous at times. But competing wise, I think it's awesome how things have shifted and changed. It allows more opportunities to compete where I get to go now to two sanctionals, which is equal to two regionals and have that opportunity, uh, be able to travel to some cool places. So that's fun in itself. Being able to have Christine there with me all the time um, makes it awesome. She's the one who takes care of me, who makes sure everything's set up so I don't have to worry about anything. All I have to do is go and work out and I know food's taken care of, recovery is taken care of. When I just want to lay down, she's making sure I'm stretching and staying on top of me. For it. Yeah. So. I have um, a program coming out with Active Life, and it's a recovery-based program. So I pretty much set out 10 workouts, um, recovery workouts that I like, I like the most out of my recovery the past three years. So I kind of um, put them all together and then we videoed them and I talked over explaining them and stuff. So that's something new to kind of look for in the next months. I'll be promoting it on my Instagram and letting you know when it's coming out, but I'm super stoked about that. <laughs> I'm like, uh, well, you don't even want to know what I watch, okay? <laughs> what do you watch? Um, no? I'm into, like, I like the weird ass documentaries about aliens, like conspiracy theory shit. Uh, <laughs> I, I love murder documentaries, so I'm always on that. There, I honestly have watched all the ones on Netflix, and now I'm just going to YouTube because I have nothing else to watch on Netflix. <laughs> oh man, my hair. <laughs> I can't tell if they're like upset. The people, just, confused. the people this morning, they were like, who are you? <laughs> and like shook my hand. Wait, really? Yeah. Damn, I wish I was here for that. My goal is CrossFit Games 2020. This year, don't get me wrong, like I wanna make it to the CrossFit Games, but this year for me, my focus is getting back into the competition, getting that experience again, feeling those feelings, you know, like I feel like a rookie again. There's so many things that go on on the competition floor, like and I have to just learn those things again. Um, so yeah, my focus is, is just really getting back out there and doing the best I can. Putting the best, my best effort forward and having fun. And I am all about having fun. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's not about having fun, like it's about winning. But 
no. Like, I want to have fun, and if I'm not having fun, then we have to reevaluate things. What up guys? If you just enjoyed the content that you watched and you're interested in competing at sanctionals or even another weekend throwdown, we've got you covered. We've developed programs that are gonna be very similar to what you just saw take place uh, with some of the athletes that were preparing for their specific sanctionals. And all we need you to do is click the link here and it's gonna guide you to movement selection movement breakdown in regards to why you're doing it, how you're doing it, and it's gonna prepare you specifically for the kind of sanctional and the duration of sanctional that you're preparing for.